Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tessa and I'm here with part one of my June 2017 wrap up. The first book that I read in June is The Pearl Thief by Elizabeth Ween. And this book is a prequel to Codename Verity, which is one of my favorite books. And I, ah, I usually love Elizabeth Ween's books. She's written one other one that I didn't love that much. And this one, I, I didn't really like it. I don't think that people who haven't read Codename Verity will enjoy this book because, at least for me, the thing I liked best about it was getting to see the characters from Codename Verity as um, kids. Codename Verity is about a World War II spy and her friend who's a pilot, and this book follows um, the spy and her older brother um, when they're younger, just a few years before World War II starts. I loved seeing them. Um, when they are 15 and 16 respectively. I loved seeing their family. I loved the Scottish setting. I thought that was all wonderful. However, the romance in this book was very distasteful in my opinion. There's kind of two different sides to it and I hated both of them. And it's not a huge part of the book, but it was big enough that it kind of, kind of killed my enjoyment a little bit. So I guess I would recommend this one if you've read Codename Verity and you want to know more about Queenie and Jamie. But other than that, skip this one and read some of Elizabeth Ween's other books. The next book that I read this month was a reread for me, and that is Mara, Daughter of the Nile by Eloise Jarvis McGraw. I've read this book several times before, and I just really, really like it. It is set in ancient Egypt, and it is about a girl named Mara who's a slave, but she is seen stealing some bread rolls from a baker's apprentice by two different very important people, and both of them see her and think she would make a really good spy. So she actually ends up becoming a double agent. Um, on one side she's spying for a man who supports Queen Hatshepsut, and on the other hand she's spying for a man who supports Queen Hatshepsut's younger brother, um, Thutmose III. And it is a very, it's not a very long book, but it's a very good one. It covers um, a lot of ground. Mara is spying, she's trying not to get killed, she's trying to fit in with um, the palace that she goes to in order to spy. And I just, I always enjoy this one. I will say that, as I understand it, the representation of Queen Hatshepsut is not very accurate. She's kind of a tyrant in this book, and I don't think that is really the truth. But apart from that, and apart from a very rushed ending, this book is just really good, and it's one that I really enjoy. And the next book that I read is In the Forest of Sarah by Patricia A. McKillop. I think I've mentioned before how much I love Patricia A. McKillop. I just love her books. I have read several of them and I'm working through all of them because this woman could write about cardboard boxes and I would read it because her writing is so beautiful. I, I just love her books. I love her characters, I love her plots, but I really, really love her writing. So this book is In the Forests of Serre and it is a fantasy because that's what she writes. It's about a princess who has to go to the neighboring kingdom of Serre in order to marry the king's son to make an alliance. And that's not really what it's about at all, that's kind of what it's about. There's a lot of other stories that kind of weave in and out of it. It is just beautiful. I, I just love her books and I love her writing, I love her characters, I just love everything she does. Like I said, I would read a book about cardboard boxes if it was written by Patricia A. McKillop because I like her that much. The next book that I read is called Make Your Bed, Little Things That Can Change Your Life and Maybe the World by Admiral William H. McRaven. And this was a book, it's it's fairly new, I think it came out, yeah, in May, and it's been really popular at the library. There have been a lot of people talking about it and checking it out, so I figured I would check it out and see what it's about. And it's really fun to read. The idea is that there are six different important life tips that Admiral McRaven learned um, during his training in the Navy SEALs and how they can change your life and maybe the world. And the first one is make your bed or start every day with a completed task. The advice itself is not that groundbreaking. It's things like start every day with a task completed, never give up, respect everybody. What makes this book good is that he illustrates each point with stories from his um, Navy SEALs training, and that part is so interesting to read. I found reading about the training itself very, very interesting. Um, Admiral McRaven is a fairly good writer. He makes it very easy to follow along, even for someone who has no military background like myself. And I just, I really enjoyed that part of it. 
It's a very short little book, so if you are looking to learn more about the Navy SEALs training or if you need some not entirely groundbreaking advice, check this one out because it's really fun to read. And the last book that I have for this video is Escape from Camp 14, One Man's Remarkable Odyssey from North Korea to Freedom in the West by Blaine Hardin. I have recently become obsessed with North Korea and one of my library patrons who also is very interested in North Korea recommended that I read this book. It was very, very interesting to read. It is about a man named Shin Don Hook, who's the only man to ever escape from one of North Korea's labor camps that we know of. And he was actually born and raised in Camp 14, which is like the most severe labor camp, again, to our limited knowledge. And so he grew up in this camp and he, he never heard the word love until after he left. Like that's the kind of place that it was. He, I, I can't even talk about how horrible his childhood is as described in this book because there is nothing good in this camp. There is no love, there is no compassion, there is no Christianity, there is nothing positive in this. He is hungry all the time, he is trained to um, snitch on his friends and family, not that he really has much of either, in order to gain the like the respect of the guards and then maybe they'll give him more food. He's tortured, he sees his mother and his brother executed. It is horrific. And the saddest part is that it ends talking about a speech that he gave after he made it out of North Korea and made it to the United States. And he talks about the fact that physically he's left the, the camps, but psychologically he's still there. And how trying to get over that kind of upbringing and that kind of life and life in the camps is just so difficult and so, so sad. So I, I was firmly rooting for Shin by the end of the book. He is slightly an unreliable narrator, not, not in any terrible way, but he does say sometimes like, this is what I told people when I first got out of North Korea and this is what I'm saying now. And the author is really good about kind of saying this, like, this is what Shin told me is true and this is what other people who maybe have similar experiences have said and that's why we believe him. So it's, um, it's a very thoughtful book. Blaine Hardin does not just accept everything that Shin told him, but he is, he does trust Shin. All right, my camera's died twice, so I think I'm done with this video. I am now reading One Good Night by Mercedes Lackey, which seems pretty interesting so far, but I am right at the beginning. So thank you very much for watching, and please let me know what books you are currently reading right now, or if you've read any of the books that I've mentioned, what your thoughts on them were. Okay, see you next time. Bye!